Hi guys, welcome to Paternix Corner. My name's Terry, and in this video, I want to go a little bit more in depth on hatch rates and more specifically, uh, hatch mortality. I've been getting quite a few questions recently on the channel um, regarding failed hatches and the reasons for those failed hatches. Uh, we did a video a couple weeks ago on egg developmental stages of Paternix quail during the incubation process, and that would be a good video to refer to. Uh, to be able to figure out at what stage of development your eggs were at when they died. Um, a good rule of thumb to go by is if you're following all good uh, collecting and storage and incubating practices, um, you should be getting about an 80% hatch rate from your eggs. 10% uh, of the eggs that fail to hatch should be from infertility and the other 10% uh, should be from egg mortality. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring you in a little bit closer to the uh, computer and we're going to go ahead and discuss some of the symptoms and the causes and some of the remedies that you can take uh, to rectify this situation. Okay, so here we are at the computer and if you look on the right hand side you can see that I created a sheet uh, that lists uh, the symptoms and the probable causes and any corrective measures that can be taken to rectify the problem. Um, probably the number one reason I see for eggs that fail to uh, hatch are due to the eggs being infertile. Um, Caternix quail eggs can be uh, candled. Uh, it can be a little bit difficult due to the coloration of the eggs. But if you look at this first clip here, you can see that the egg is completely illuminated and it's showing absolutely no development. So this is an infertile egg. On the second clip, you can see that only the air cell on the large end of the egg is uh, illuminated and the rest of the egg is dark. So it's showing that there is some development in this egg. And on this last one, if you look closely, you can actually see the veins forming and growing around the inside of the egg. And this egg is definitely viable and uh, definitely developing. Okay, so back to our symptom sheet. Um, probably the biggest cause of infertile eggs is due to a poor male to female ratio. You wanna make sure that you've got enough males in with your hens uh, so that all the hens are being bred. Um, if you don't have enough males, you're going to have hens that aren't being bred, or if you've got males that are more dominant than the other males, um, they may be stopping uh, some of the, or preventing some of the males from breeding with the hens. So keep your ratios down, preferably um, one male to every four hens, or even a one to three ratio is a good ratio. Uh, the next one on the list is insufficient daylight hours. Uh, Caternix quail need between 14 and 16 hours of daylight a day. To be sexually active. Uh, if you're noticing um, that your males um, aren't producing any foam or they're not crowing uh, as much during the day, it may do, be due to a lack of uh, daylight hours and they're just not showing any interest in the hens. Uh, the next one could be that you've got an issue with aging males. Um, so what you want to do in that case is just replace your older males with males that are younger and uh, you know more sexually mature. Um, the next issue would be overcrowding. If you've got more birds per square feet than recommended, um, the males can have a problem uh, singling out an unbred hen and may not be accessing that hen at all. So uh, keep your number of birds per square feet down, preferably below three birds per square feet. Um, and then the next one, um, a probable cause, could be that your eggs are just stored too long um, you've collected them and you put them in storage and storage needs to be between 55 and say 68 degrees um, and you want to store the eggs about seven days or less I know some people say you can go 10 days but once you get up around 10 days you are going to get some eggs that um, are infertile okay and our next uh, symptom sheet is cystic embryos um, or underdeveloped embryos and blood rings. Um, and these can be caused by improper storage, uh, improper incubation temperatures, poor breeder nutrition, and shipped eggs. Uh, shipped eggs are notorious for being mishandled in the post office. Um, so what you wanna do is when you get them in, you wanna make sure that you let them settle for about 24 hours prior to incubating them. Uh, basically just place them on a countertop somewhere uh, with the pointy end of the egg pointing down and uh, just let them sit for 24 hours. Um, 
poor breeder nutrition, um, you want to make sure that your breeders that you're collecting your eggs from um, are fed a balanced diet and even supplemented with a vitamin, uh, mineral, and electrolyte uh, supplements. Um, improper incubation temperatures. If your incubator is a little too warm or a little too cool, uh, you could run into issues um, with your embryos dying. Um, what you need to do in this case is make sure that you calibrate your thermometers and verify that the regulator in your incubator is actually correct. Um, so if you calibrate your thermometer and you set your incubation temperature to 99.5 degrees, but your thermometers are reading, you know, 97 or 101, um, that can cause these issues. And then again, back to improper storage. Um, eggs need to be stored in a cool place, which, like I say earlier, uh, preferably between 55 and 68 degrees, and try not to store them for more than a week. Okay, on to the next uh, sheet. Um, if you're getting a really poor hatch rate and you have many of your embryos are dead in the earlier stages of development, um, any of the proper cause, probable causes could be uh, back again, improper incubation temperatures. Um, usually they're too high, you're cooking your eggs. Um, improper egg turning, your egg turner may have failed. Or if you're turning by hand, um, you may not be turning on them enough or you're turning them too far. Um, what some people do, I see this a lot of times in the uh, chicken industry, is they'll mark one side of the egg and then turn it 180 degrees when they turn it. Um, you, can, you can do that with quail eggs, um, but because quail eggs have uh, markings on them, you could just turn the egg a little bit and you can see that the markings have changed. Um, genetics can cause uh, early uh, embryo death, poor genetics. Uh, improper incubator ventilation. Uh, you want to make sure that your vent holes on your incubator are open. Or incubator failure. If you have a power outage and the incubator is off for a while, um, this can cause the embryos to die at early stages. Um, what I do is I keep my incubators on a battery backup system. That way if power does go out for a little bit, um, the incubator is going to continue running until the power comes back on, or hopefully until the power comes back on. Um, it'll also protect your regulators from uh, any power surges that happen to come through the line. So uh, basically, you know, on the incubation temperatures, uh, calibrate your thermometers and just verify that your incubator is at the temperature that it's supposed to be at. Okay, the uh, next sheet, um, you've got, say you've got pipped eggs, but the, a, the embryo are dying prior to hatching. Um, this could be probable causes, could be uh, low humidity um, during lockdown, and which causes the uh, embryo to get shrink wrapped. It could be a malpositioned embryo, or it could just be a weak chick uh, due to poor genetics. Uh, up at low humidity, um, basically what you want to do is you want to increase your humidity levels to 65% uh, during lockdown. And uh, you do not want to open the incubator, especially if any of the eggs have pipped. Um, you don't want to open the incubator. A rush of dry air can go in there and actually sh uh, shrink wrap the, the chick. Um, malposition embryos is usually caused by um, your eggs being in the wrong position during incubation, like the pointy end up. You want to make sure that pointy end is down um, inside the turner. Or if you're not using a turner, the eggs can be laid on their side. And also when you remove the turner, you want to put the eggs uh, in the hatching boxes and laying on their sides. Um, and as far as weak chicks or uh, poor genetics, um, you only want to incubate eggs from healthy flocks. Um, if you're purchasing eggs and having them shipped in, or if you're buying eggs locally, make sure that you're getting them from a NPIP certified uh, flock that way you know that the birds are disease free and that the owner is taking enough care to ensure that the birds are healthy and usually this can also mean that they have a genetically diverse stock and you're not going to you know get any birds with any issues okay and the next one on the list is the embryo dies prior to pipping and the probable causes under this are uh, low incubation temperatures undernourished breeders infected eggs or lethal genes. Uh, 
low incubation temperatures, it takes you right back to calibrating your thermometers and double checking them against your regulator to make sure that your regulator is accurate. Um, you also want to monitor the incubation temperatures throughout the incubation process. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, undernourished breeders. Um, you want to make sure that you're collecting eggs from breeders that are healthy and well nourished um, and you know just feed them a, a balanced diet and uh, supplement with vitamins and minerals. Uh, infected eggs. You want to make sure that you're only setting clean eggs. Uh, if you're washing your eggs prior to incubation, make sure that you're washing them in water that is warmer than the temperature of the egg because if you put the egg in water that's cooler, um, the egg has the potential of drawing in wash water and potentially bacteria, which can contaminate the egg. Um, also, I don't spray any Listerine or peroxide on my egg to disinfect them. Um, I just don't know that that's not uh, damaging the bloom on the egg, and the bloom is Mother Nature's way of protecting the contents of that egg. So. I don't even wash my eggs. All I do is I select the cleanest eggs for hatching. Um, I also select eggs that are of, of appropriate size, and we'll go into that a little bit more uh, in later on in this video. Okay, and lethal genes. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna put lethal genes in with um, uh, genetics. Um, if you're if you're doing a lot of inbreeding, um, that can produce lethal genes. Also, uh, some color variations, um, like in the uh, Golden Manchurians. Uh, I know if you're breeding the Goldens, back to Goldens, they say that they uh, have a ally gene, I believe it's pronounced, and that is a lethal gene and can affect your, uh, your hatch rates. So um, avoid inbreeding and avoid breeding uh, colors that are known to carry the lethal gene, and you should be okay on that. Okay, uh, the next one is uh, you're getting an early hatch. Uh, your, your eggs are hatching um, prior to day 17. Um, usually that's an indication of high incubation temperatures or that you have stored the eggs in an environment where the temperatures were too high. Uh, high incubation, again, calibrate your incubators and uh, make sure that you're monitoring the temperatures throughout the incubation process. Uh, as far as storage temperatures, just store your eggs in a cool area and turn the eggs two or three times a day and you should be good. Okay, and the next one on the list is late hatching or um, hatching that's not uniform. And the causes of this are can be warm or cool spots in your incubator, uh, low incubation temperatures, and old or improperly stored eggs. And I think by now you're starting to see a pattern of some of these. Um, for the uh, incubation temperatures, again, calibrate the thermometers, check it against your regulators, and monitor it during uh, incubation. Uh, for warm and cool spots in the incubator, uh, if it's a commercial incubator, uh, you might want to contact the manufacturer and find out why you might be getting warm or cool spots. Um, some people will place bottles of warm water in the incubator if you've got room. And what this does is they come up to temperature and they actually help to stabilize the temperature inside the uh, incubator. And uh, again, back to improperly uh, stored eggs or old eggs. Um, you want to collect your eggs on a daily basis and you want to store them for no more than seven days and you want to make sure that you're storing them at the proper temperatures. Okay, and the next one on the list is you have a fully developed chick that fails to hatch. Uh, this could be caused by low humidity uh, it could be that the chick is just too weak or too small to pit the egg. It can also be caused by a malpositioned chick in the egg. Uh, malpositioning is usually caused by uh, inconsistent uh, incubation temperatures or egg turners that aren't working properly. Or when you go into lockdown and you take the, remove the egg from the uh, egg turner, uh, you want to lay it in the hatching tray on its side because this is when the chick will position itself for hatching. Um, weak or small chicks, just make sure that you're selecting eggs that are not too small. The small eggs uh, usually develop smaller chicks. Um, so you want to incubate eggs that are, you know, about 14 grams or better um, and are from uh, breeders that have uh, NPIP clean uh, birds. 
Uh, humidity, basically just monitor your, mid, your humidity uh, during incubation. It should be between 35 and 50% and during lockdown between 60 and 65%. Okay, and the next one on the list is crippled or malformed chicks. And this can be caused um, by high incubation temperatures. Uh, it could also be caused by low humidity during incubation. Uh, improper turning, um, nutrition of your breeders, and uh, if you're getting splay legs, you want to uh, make sure that uh, the floor of your incubator or your hatching tray is not too slippery, uh, causing the chick's legs to, to basically do the splits and cause a uh, splay leg. Um, as far as nutrition of your breeders, uh, only incubate eggs from uh, you know, healthy and well-nourished uh, breeders. Um, for turning, make sure you're using an automatic turner uh, that's working properly uh, or if you're hand turning make sure that you are uh, turning at least three times a day um, your humidity levels during incubation between should be between 35 and 50 percent and uh, for the high incubation temperatures again I can't stress how much you need to calibrate your thermometers and verify them against your regulator and monitor the temperatures throughout the incubation process Okay, and the next one on the list is weak or small chicks. We kind of covered this a little bit earlier, but this is a little bit more in depth on that. Um, weak or small chicks are caused by high incubation temperatures. Uh, they're just developing too fast, so you want to use the recommended incubation temperatures. Small eggs, when you're collecting eggs, um, you want to collect eggs that are between 14, that are above 14 grams, but preferably less than 20 grams. Um, the larger eggs can be double yolkers and they're not going to hatch anyway. Um, malnutri malnourished or diseased breeders. Again, you want to uh, select eggs from healthy, disease-free flocks. And uh, if you're purchasing eggs, you want to make sure that, uh, that the uh, breeder or distributor is selling eggs that are from NPIP certified stock. Um, also, if you're getting weak or small chicks, it could be that they have polarum typhoid. Um, so you want to, again, purchase eggs from breeders um, that are NPIP certified. Okay, next one on the list, uh, we're going to go back into malpositioning. This is just to give you an overview of the malpositioning and reasons for it. Um, a chick that's fully developed but fails to hatch can also be malpositioned in the egg. Uh, the head should be under the right wing and oriented towards the air, air cell. So if you open up an egg, um, if you're careful enough, um, when you open the egg, um, you can actually determine the position that the uh, embryo is in. Um, you want to look to see if the head is underneath the right wing. And uh, also that the head is oriented towards the air cell. Um, any other position, and that's a malpositioned egg. And again, this is back to incubation temperature and improper turning of the eggs. Okay guys, so we've seen that most of the reasons uh, for a high mortality rate can usually be traced back to an issue with either your incubation practices, uh, your breeders, or an equipment failure. Um, and I hope this video kind of helps you figure out where to start looking and hopefully be able to rectify the situation. I want to thank you guys for joining me today. Um, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do so. It helps me out and uh, you'll get a notification of any new and upcoming videos. Um, thanks again, guys. Stay safe and we'll see you on the next one.